up guys, I'm Asian Mans and in today's video I'm going to be reacting to Geography Now Poland. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe, like and share if you like the video. What to expect from Poland? Whoa, they're a European country. Some uh, The reason why I'm actually doing this uh, uh, video is actually a friend of mine commented on one of my videos saying, you know what, you can't wait for my the, the, uh, reaction to Poland, so I was like, you know what? gotta do the reaction to Poland. So, here I am. From this video, what I would really like to know is what's so special about Poland, you know? Like, what are the ins and outs, the geographical kind of uh, beauties of it? You know, like, one question I always like to ask is, would I like to go on a holiday there? You know what I mean? So, let's see if they have what it takes to go on holiday. Let's start. All right, we've reached Poland. Europe's, uh, how can I put this? Poland knows how to take a hit. It's like. <laughs> okay, oh, whoa. <laughs> yo, 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 relax with the punches. <laughs> Abyss. Is that all you got? I'm not even breaking the sweat, fuckers. <laughs> oh, it's see, I knew. They're very tough. Like I said, they're very tough. Friend, Art, he's half Polish. Uh, Art, do you know anything about Poland? I know nothing about Poland, but I know my last name. He's is half Polish? Friday. How so? So anyway, I have another Polish friend named Conrad who's actually also going to be in this episode. He's Polish and he speaks Polish. Hey, f that guy. Well, uh, Art, you can also play Poland in the skits and stuff in this episode. Is that cool? Yeah, I guess so. All right, cool. Anyway, hey everybody, I'm your host, Bob. So <laughs> welcome to the Wolverine of Europe. The Poles know how to deal with calamity, and if there was ever a mutant apocalypse, you would probably want one on your team. In any case, let's begin. How to piss off a Polish person one on one. Oh man, I just visited team. Poland. I sure loves that Eastern European country. It's Central! Central European! Whoa. Yeah, they don't like being called Eastern Europe. Even though, I mean, come on, they're kind of more on the Eastern side of the continent. And it's. Okay, okay, Central, Central, Central European, Central. The country is located in Central wait, Europe and bordered by seven other countries. Uh, Keep in mind this wait, they are in the East. Why? What's Russia the problem? Kaliningrad. Speaking of which, we already mentioned this in the Germany episode, but Poland shares an island called Uzedam or Uznam with Germany in this lagoon. The borders follow some natural boundaries like rivers and oh, mountains. Wow. However, most of yeah. them were agreed upon after war times. The country is divided into 16 voivodeships or provinces, 16. the capital and largest city of the country, Warsaw, in the center. It also holds the busiest airport, Warsaw International. From there, the second largest city is Krakow, known as the medieval capital, down south, and it holds the second largest airport, John Paul II Krakow International. And rounding out for third place second is the city level. of Łódź, which means boat, nearly in the center of the whole country. Nonetheless, the city of Gdansk you know what, the, the third largest airport, Polish Gdansk International, and also the busiest shipping port located on the Baltic Sea, where much of the cargo comes into the country. Otherwise, their entire sea access is confined to the coastline. They do not own any distant islands in the Baltic. Due to the general flat landscape what? making much of the north and central parts, Poland is a bustling transport you hub with numerous that roadways that traverse every single corner into every neighboring nation. Since joining the EU, nearly 2 billion euros have been invested in Poland's rail lines and high-speed lines are being constructed today. Poland doesn't have any autonomous areas, but if we had to discuss historical and cultural regions, many people may just refer to this general area Hey, as not Syria, on those areas! Everyone knows what's Russia. going on! This general area is Pomerania, that's right, same as the dog, which is where it comes from, and the coastal area is Kashubia, where the Kashubians uh, are Pomerania, mostly, uh, the one that goes Poland, Poland, Lesser Poland, around Poland which at the very border has Ruthenia, or Red Ruthenia. Parts of the south are considered Silesia, which are inhabited by peoples that have their own distinct culture apart from the Polish. It's all kind of confusing, and we'll talk more about it later. One thing you have to understand is that historically, Poland had a lot of different types of administrative divisions and much of it was shaped by war. Sometimes they had more land, other times they had less, and for 123 years they kind of disappeared altogether. Here's Prussia! Prussia! Yeah, what? Austria! Well, actually, they almost completely disappeared. I mean, Krakow was technically a free city state for about 30 years. And keep in mind, we mentioned this in the Lithuania episode, almost. but if you want to be incredibly ah. technical, historically, the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth had some colonies. Way back yeehaw when they thought one island in the Gambia, as well as Trinidad and Tobago, would be good overseas investments, making them the only sites that the Polish had colonized outside of Europe. Then what happened? In the end, it was too hard for them to manage, and they sold them off. The end. So anyway, here are some places of interest you guys, the Polish geography, suggested we mention this episode. They have quite a few UNESCO heritage sites. A lot of them are like chapels. The holy mountain of Gabarka, the painted village of Zalipe, Chopin's heart, this rock city, the upside down house, Kosciuszko Mound, the house, the world's tallest house. Tons of cool statues and monuments like these. The world's tallest pope statue. Tons of World War II sites. It's kind of what they're known for. With the most famous one probably being the Auschwitz concentration camp. Of course, there are way too many churches 
images oh, like these. Totally good, this yeah. one was where all the former kings were coronated. And of course, there's Warsaw's St. John's Cathedral. There's a bunch of synagogues that actually survived World War II. And there's even a wooden mosque no in the Tatar minority yes. in Krushinyani. There's Amazing. so many museums and galleries. Here's a bunch of notable ones. Oh, gallery, Too many course. castles, but they're very proud of having the world's largest medieval castle in Melbourne. Yeah, Poland does what not fall short when it comes to sites to see, or things to medieval do, or nature to explore. And that means we move on to the next segment. The... It is said that the name Poland Physical drug comes from this Polanyi, is which means it. people living in open fields. Poland is not all flat and not all plains. There's much more to it than you think. Poland is generally divided into five physical regions. The coast, the lake lands, mm. the Polish plain, the Polish uplands, the and the mountain regions. Uh -huh. Much of Poland's coast along the Baltic Sea is straight until you hit the east and you get these interesting natural formations called spits. We've already talked about them in the Lithuania episode, spits. but basically, spits are thin, narrow sandbanks that divide the sea from another body of water, creating saltwater lagoons the largest one being the Bay of Puck, the Szczecin, and the Vistula Lagoon, shared with Russia's Kaliningrad Exclave. Much of the country inland lies on the flat Polish plain, part of the greater North European plain, a huge open flat segment of Central Europe that extends across multiple countries. Many people say that this is both the blessing and curse of Poland, because although a third of the country is forested, this one being the largest national park, and about a third is arable, making them a powerhouse contributor to Europe's agriculture sector, it did kind of make it easy for outside forces to enter and invade, with little or no natural obstacles mm. barricading the interior of the country. Anyway, within this plain, many rivers like the Motek, Vata, the longest river, the Vistula, meander through the fertile valleys, passing the through Vistula. many important cities oh, like Warsaw. Yeah, the on the north side, you have two massive Vistula. lake districts, the Pomeranian and the Poland. larger Masurian, which also holds the largest lake of the country, Larkshniarve. The further south you go, the higher the elevation Shnyarve. gets until you hit the Poland uplands. A little further south Listen, on the border with the Czech Republic Polish. and Slovakia, Polish. you find the two main and largest so, mountain chains, the Sudets and the Beskid which form the north part of the larger famous Carpathian mountain chain. Here you can also find the tallest peak, Mount Rysy, right on the border of Slovakia. All right, and that just about does it. Now I need my triple shot of espresso break, and this time, Art is going to come in to finish off the physical geography section. What do you want me to <laughs> say, Barbie? The next thing on the teleprompter. Now, as you can see by this point, Poland has a lot more than <laughs> just <laughs> flat plains and lakes. They even have moving sand dunes yes, in the north, bills. and a small desert in Boyendouf, which literally translates to mistakes. Yeah. Poland, deserts, you'd Mistakes. never think those two would go together, right? Oh, and there's also what? crooked deserts forests made up of trees that bend at a 90 Whoa, degree what? angle. Many What's people wrong? have theories like as this. to how it got that way. Some say it's natural, some say it was a dude trying to make chairs. In any case, Poland <laughs> is a major producer of apples, six in the world, as wow. well as being the world's largest treacle. Treacle, what the hell? Oh, the apples are delicious. And amber, so amber had a massive apple. I don't even know what amber is either. What is Poland. that, petrified tree set? It actually is. It is. Whoa. <laughs> Today, though, Poland's economy is now mainly driven Jesus. by the service sector and industry with main products like machinery and cars, buses, and video games being their largest export. Anyway, Poland Cyberpunk. also has quite a few endemic animal species issues, like storks, Eurasian lynx, roe deer, and they have one of the largest populations of the rare European bison, which, have you guys ever had a bison burger? I mean, that's like really no. good. All right, don't eat those. Those are endangered. Bears. And bears. In fact, a bear once served in what? the Polish army, and there's a statue dead what? To him. Look it up. Gold old Voitech. That's amazing. Anyway, time to finish up with food. Some of the top Polish Why is there a UV on that bed? The Polish geography peeps. Geography. That's what I call them, Art. What I know about food is that. My Polish friend has a lot of soup, so I feel like there's gonna be a lot of soup dishes. Suggested we mention include things like bigosh, cabbage rolls, galanka pork knuckle, roasted duck what served with honey soup? and apples. So oh, many soups really. like these. But the national dish being sour rye soup. And of course, the most popular dishes, dishes many people have heard of. Pierogi, kielbasa, kavanos, and style sausage. And bagels. Yes, bagels originated from Poland, from the Polish Jews. They have a lot of types of meat. To be honest, I've been to a Polish shop and their selection of meat is takes up a whole aisle. Not New York. But they did move to New York. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and of course, you cannot talk about Poland without mentioning vodka. Some say it was invented in Poland. Nah. Some say the Polish just make really good vodka. But either way, vodka usually takes up a huge section in most Polish grocery stores. I've seen this guy. Ah, I guess I'll <laughs> no, you haven't. That was not Greek whiskey, and we don't talk about that here. Polish people know what they like. They're a distinct <laughs> people. Speaking they don't of know which, it. we now move on to the demographics. Can I do like one of those special effect outros, like you yeah. know Wolverine theme? Can I have the claws sure. or something like that? Sure. Yeah, go right here. Okay. <laughs> Is it true if I kill you, I become you? Let's find out. Huh? Oh. 
It does work. Now, some of you guys have told me, in Poland, there's kind of like a word that sums up the Polish mindset. Zawatwicz. Wait, he didn't something get along his the lines of Accomplishing tasks and taking care of business. Half of everybody in Europe has probably at one point at least encountered a Pole. They're everywhere. Working. Polish doctors in Germany. Polish contract workers in London. Polish bus drivers in Iceland. Work is in their blood, oh, no. and it's a huge part of who they are. The population is about 40 million. However, keep in mind, diaspora-wise, there are about 20 million Poles living abroad, and they are the second largest Slavic group after Russians. The country is incredibly homogenous, with about 96% of the population claiming to be Polish, which is part of the Slavic family group. This makeup is mostly due to the Nazi intervention of World War II and Soviet relocation policies mm -hmm. of the 20th century that drastically changed the previously diverse population. The country has few minority groups, however, of the minorities, the largest groups would be the Silesian at about 1.3%, and the Kashubians at just under 1%. The rest is mostly made up of other Europeans like Ukrainians, Belarusians, Czechs, and non That's a very small they amount. Use the Polish Zwati as their currency, they use the type C and F plug outlets, and they drive on the right side of the road. Now, of course, the main language of Poland is, of course, Polish. Lots of people say Polish is, like, really hard to learn. For one, they have seven yeah. cases of speech and too many consonants that are smashed all together at once. Geography Pavel says the Polish language is basically just spoken Wi-Fi passwords. Here's Conrad with a Polish tongue twister. <laughs> Sometimes even the Polish people say they have to polish up on their Polish. <laughs> Otherwise, Poland is kind of a sociological anomaly. Even though they are Slavic, it's kind of like the easternmost extent of Latin influence, which explains why the majority at around 86% identify as either Catholic or, in the very least, nominally Catholic, varying degrees of devotion. Catholicism plays a huge role in Polish culture. They even have a channel dedicated to the Pope on TV. Politically, Poland is usually a more oh. conservative oh. nation that holds to its roots, and even though they're part of the EU, they usually do not let anyone tell them how they should run things in their own country. It's their home, their rules. It's like, all right, so it's settled. Uh, what do you think of this proposal for the union, guys? I hate it. Now, Poland, <laughs> you're a key player. We need you to like this. I still hate it. <laughs> come on, Poland, <laughs> don't be stubborn. Oh, really, Germany? You want to come back to Poland again and tell us how to do things around here? <laughs> Remember what happened last time? <laughs> oh, my. Are you really going to play this card again? I always will. A little exaggerated, but yeah, don't push the Polish. They've gone through tons of that. I mean, literally, like a fifth of their population died during World War II, the majority of whom were Polish Jews. Often in tight-knit Yiddish-speaking communities, Poland had one of the highest populations of Jews prior to World War II, and at one point, up to 10%. They played a huge historical role in what Poland was and would be. Oh. Poles are proud that they were the only European-occupied country to never collaborate with the Nazis. They never officially surrendered, and all those years the Nazis were there, the underground army kept fighting. Poles have an incredibly complex history. I mean, they had a weird, Electoral yeah, monarchy tough. thing? Conrad, explain. So the royal elections of the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth became a thing after the death of the last Egalonian on the Polish throne. And at his death, it was decided that there would not be a royal dynasty that would just continue from generation to generation. That is to say that they would elect a king from a royal dynasty in Europe, but after his death, they would what? once again elect another monarch instead of letting his children take over the Polish throne. Thank you, Conrad. Taking all that heavy stuff in, Polish but people have told me there's always right kind of like this sense of somber, stoic, suspicious, cynical, yet productive and prudent mentality that encapsulates the Polish. It's a weird paradox when you see them because it's like... Ugh, being Polish is the worst, seriously. I know, right? I hate Polish sausages, they're so gross. They are, and the government is just totally whack. Yeah, yeah. Poland is terrible. What did you f well, that took a little longer than expected, so uh, here's Hannah with culture stuff. Good to be back. Well, Polish Hannah. people have gone through a lot. They were pretty much fought for and invaded over 40 times for about 400 years. Nonetheless, the Polish no people way. held through those centuries and retained their sense of identity. For one, in Poland, it is actually just as popular, if not maybe even more, to celebrate one's name day as well as your birthday. Poland has quite a high level what? of birthday. educated individuals, with about 80% of the young adult population having enrolled in university. Also, side note, the 35% of Polish people living abroad are referred to as Polonia. There's a contest where we figure out who is the strongest man in the world, and Poland has won the most of those no contests. Way. Then we have the Silesian and Kashubian minorities. Let's let Conrad explain this one because, you know, it's a little complex. The Silesians, who live for the most part today in Upper Silesia, are an ethnographic group with a distinctive dialect of Polish. Internationally, though, it's considered not as a nation or people, 
though some within the region consider themselves as a nation, which the Kashubians are, and they are considered as a West Slavic people separate from the Polish people. They are loyal towards Poland, but they have their own uh, recognized uh, minority status, they have their own traditions, they have their own cuisine, and they have their own language. There are even bilingual signs, which um, Paul will definitely put in now. Thank you, Conrad. They've also racked oh, up quite a few Nobel Peace Prizes at 17. They are front runners of innovations and inventions Nobel like Peace Prize. kerosene Damn. and the kerosene lamp, Amazing. the oil well, the bulletproof vest, and the modern drug test. A lot of festivals can be found year-round throughout the country and in different regions. Popular ones include All Saints Day, May Day, the La Cognac Festival in Krakow, and during Christmas you might see the creepy Turin. Oh, look at that to expound a bit more on Polish oh. music and arts, here you know, it's Keith, or whatever. Yeah! Music in Poland goes yeah! way back to the ancient Slavic. Oh, no, Instruments typically used include things like the wood horn, the hurdy gurdy, Whoa, horse hair I'm drum, the pedal accordion, and the suka. The what you call me? Although he had spent most of his time in France, Chopin was born in Poland. His homeland was always one of the central themes to his often Chopin somber and melancholy Chopin. masterpieces cherished worldwide. During the Polish National Revival, this dude, this way, this dude, music of his. collected variety of folk music for broadcast, including the most famous ones, these which are still performed to this day. I know that uh, there's this guitar player named uh, Jakub Zichetsky, and he is amazing. Thank you, Keith. <laughs> And now the most complicated part, history. In the quickest way I can condense it, Slavic tribes and states in the Vistula Basin, Piast Dynasty, Greater Poland, Christianity and tribal unification, Pomerania is annexed, this dude becomes the first king, feudal disintegration, this Mongols invade, China. Czechs invade, Teutonic Knights invade, Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, Swedes invade, Prussians invade, end of the Commonwealth, Constitution written, down. Napoleonic Wars, Kingdom of Poland and Free State of Krakow, Russian partitions and Russian Poland, World War One, Polish-Soviet War, independence from Russia, Germany invades, World War II yeah, begins, really communism years, Russia. independence, it's weird West Germany stuff, some other Nothing interesting Russia things, like they got a Pope and a Nobel friends. Peace Prize, first fully free elections, they joined NATO and the EU, and here we are today! Some people you guys, the Polish geography people suggested we mention in this episode include all those dukes and kings, pretty much any hero that fought with the winged hussars, Copernicus, although he was technically German, Marie Curie was actually Polish, Mikołaj Rai, no Pope way. John Paul II, all I'm these sorry. athletes, I'm these directors, you. all these artists and musicians, the dude from the movie The Pianist was a real guy, these American revolutionaries, yeah. and speaking of Americans, John Krasinski, Kristen Bell, Steve Carell, and Roman Polanski are also no way. Apple co-founder Steve Wozniak, Three and of finally, of course, Dregor Sprenczycz. And there's a lot more I could have mentioned, but that would take way too long. Okay. There's a lot of famous Poles all over the world. They've left their global mark. And speaking of global marks, that brings us to... As a central Friends player zone. in Europe for a long, complicated history, right, like I, said, no I don't think Russia is the one of the entourage over many, many years of Polish Neither. existence. Yeah, for one, as part of the Visegrad group, the Czechs and Slovaks are generally considered the close West Slavic brothers. The They've had very group, few wars and conflicts with them. They, they understand right. their languages, kind of. However, they both kind of think the other sounds funny when they talk. For Russians, it's more of like a people mm -hmm. versus government thing. As people, Poles and Russians get along quite well on a human level. It's just the governments that often disagree and clash. Poland, for a while, was under the Iron oh, Curtain and Warsaw Pact, which complicated things even more. But as crazy as things get, there is always kind of like this universal Slavic understanding, which is why Ukraine comes in as a pretty close friend. Ukrainians love to come to Poland for work. There is also a fast-growing Ukrainian community, and they kind of share a similar post-communist struggle alliance, although they still kind of don't like how Ukrainians honor the UPA, which is a whole other story. Poland is kind of like Germany's biggest regret that Most they have UPA. to constantly be reminded of literally every day as they are neighbors, but they are the largest economic partner for them as well. Well, Germany does have many bilateral relations with Poland. It's the 21st century, people have grown up and moved on, and the future looks bright mostly between the two. Quick note, Lithuania is like the divorced wife that they remember having some of the best years of their history with. Today when a Pole meets a Lithuanian, they just kind of nod and smile, understanding everything the other is thinking without a single word. Their best friend, however, no every Pole way. has told me the same thing, Ooh. Hungary. Historically, they've shared some of the Lithuania. same monarchs, heroes, they've always Wait, helped Hungary. each other in times of need. There are many parks and monuments commemorating the 
friendship between the two. There's even a saying in Polish, two brothers, both to the saber and the bottle. In conclusion, let's give this to Conrad. Conrad, what do you have to say? Poland is a country that has a lot to offer, both geographically and has been through pretty much everything historically. It's been an empire, it's been completely erased from the map, and today Poland is a growing and thriving no country. I'm sure that the role of Poland on the European scene will only grow. Thank you, Conrad, and thank you, Art, for being in this episode. Stay tuned. Portugal is coming up next, guys. Woohoo! But thank you guys for watching. My thoughts on Poland is that they are tough. They are tough people and a tough country to like be, honestly. To know that even when Germany had invaded, they were underground, still fighting the resistance. Man, you gotta give it to them. There's some one tough to not to cut right. Also mentioned the um, lagoons in the north of Poland. The fact that they don't like to be called in uh, Central European, I mean they like to be called in Central European, not Eastern European. And also that. Yeah, comment below if you have any comments about that. <laughs> uh, thank you guys for watching and if you're new to the channel, please remember to subscribe, like and share. Until next time guys, Major out.